Live from the internet, it's the Dr. Tom the Frog Show! This is Dr. Tom the Frog, and you're watching the Dr. Tom the Frog Show, where we talk about role-playing games! I'm excited. We've got a, a, a different backdrop for uh, tonight's recording. Uh, I can't exactly say where I'm at, but let's just say that it's somewhere in space. There could be a sequel that's coming up very soon that would relate to this. Uh, so if you're not in the know, sorry for you. All right. I, I am super excited because uh, t tonight we have on a, a, a special guest. He's a, he's a game writer, and he's all the way in Hong Kong. It is Jay Foster. How are you doing, Jay? Hey, Dr. Tom. It's really good to be invited onto the show. It's always good to see. Uh, you do travel around a lot. Yes, so uh, you're further away than I am. Um, but, uh, yeah, sunny Hong Kong is yet another beautiful metropolis this morning. Though it is slightly overcast this morning. You are part of... Um, well, maybe it has something to do with this, but you're part of the Order 66 where you killed a bunch of Jedis. Is that right? You're, you're from a group called the, the C Order 66, yeah. right? Yeah, no, um, we're an organization of ex-clone troopers and ex-stormtroopers who were put together to make sure, basically, it was kind of a very traumatic event having to kill all these Jedi. There's an awful lot of force wash coming off these guys as they die. People kept getting headaches. So um, what we are is a support group for Jedi murderers. <laughs> oh man, you just ran with that one. That was great, Jay. Six D six, right? Like that. That's right. That's the name of the company you work for. Is that right? Yeah, sixty six RPG. Uh, we've also gone under sixty six Fireball. So the, the, you've got a game that's on Kickstarter called Age of Legends. Now I need I need to understand this, Jay. Why do we need another RPG about map keys? I mean, really, map keys. Well, uh, legends? That's a reference I don't get, I'm afraid. Legends, legends. to a map? Oh, le oh, map keys, yes. Well, it's an important thing to remember that if you're ever going to be using any kind of map, so your ordnance survey things in the UK, it's important to have a good range of legends. Um, and so what the game is about is about the player characters are small text boxes full of symbols and um, notes beside those symbols. And basically you go around and find tourists who are lost and help them navigate to the nearest MTR station. Oh, that's amazing. Can I be the part that's here be dragons? That, can I be that, that part of the map? You can. We might need to get you some extra scales and a long tail and some pointy fangs um, so we can actually get you in costume as well because it'd be really good to freak the, the tourists out in Hong Kong if we can have you wandering around on the map near some of the forested areas saying here be dragons. This is amazing. I love this game. Is it Okay. Is it really about maps? No, I'm afraid it's not. We do have some nice maps, but what it's actually about is ancient Greece. The working title we were running along was 66 Hellenic, which is still a search term you can use to look it up. But the basic overview of the game is it's around 300 um, before Common Era or so. And the gods, after the age of Homer, the age of Odysseus, um, the age of ancient Greek heroes, Perseus, the Argonauts, basically kind of went into a kind of hibernation. Uh, they've not been messing around in mortal affairs. So despite Greece uh, desperately needing their age and things like the Battle of Thermopylae, they've only recently come back. So the setting is just after the end of the first Spartan hegemony. Um, and the moment there is no, none of the Greek cities or poli or polis as they're called is on top. So it's an era, an era, an era a time of great flux. And into this, the gods have returned and they've started picking mortal champions. Um, so these are the player characters are these heroes who've been given a small portion, a little bit of a share of the gods' power. Oh man! So so they're not actually by birth; they're not demigods. They they just get handed some power. Pretty much. I mean, the original heroes. Uh, I don't think Odysseus. Well, Odysseus was descended from some gods, but unlike people like Theseus or or Percy Jackson, for example, taking one reference who are actually the direct sons or daughters of gods. These guys are technically mortals. I mean, you there is a, an option, a path choice in 66 where you can take that you have divine ancestry, but because the gods have not been around for nearly 500, 800 years, um, any of their bloodlines are very watered down by now. So no, there aren't demigods, but they're mortal humans who've been chosen, for better or worse, to be the instruments of the Olympian gods. Oh. I, I got to tell you, Jay, I, I just find it a little hard to believe that Zeus would be celibate for 800 years. 
I mean, yeah, this is something that leads on to an interesting thing about the game is that um, while we were writing it, we had to write a game that we wanted to write, we wanted to play. And as you've likely touched on there, a lot of the Greek, the actual morality of the ancient Greeks was something that from our point of view, we would look at and go, no, nope, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, a lot of their legends involved very, well, not arrogant, they're just very unpleasant acts between people. Um, and we've had to, well, essentially what we did is we wrote, rewrote some of these. We've skirted them. We've not mentioned them. Um, we've adjusted the settings so that it's a game where men and women are equal. They're treated equally by the gods. They're treated equally in society. There are still such things as slaves, but we we don't tend to lean so much on the very stratified and structured nature that the Greek um, civilization had. There are still citizens, there's kings, there's democrats, there's demagogues, but yeah, we one of the key things I want to promote about Age of Legends is this is a, an ancient Greek setting where you don't necessarily have to deal, unless you want to, with the baggage of ancient Greek morality. You play like demigod or demigod powered uh, folks in the ancient Greece, mm -hmm. and um, are, are there like, do, have the titans been let out? I mean, is there like a main thrust of a thing, or what, what the, are you doing? The core of the game, or the core plot that we've set up, is that the Titans were imprisoned after the Titanomachy, which is essentially the Greek for War of the Titans, where the Olympians overthrew their the previous generation, um, who had in turn overthrown the previous generations of the Catholic era. So the Greek pantheon is a history of endless war. Um, and basically the Titans are imprisoned in Tartarus. Well, some of them are, some of, many of the others are in exile, and they essentially want to resume their power. Some of them are thirsty for power, some of them simply want to see their children, some of them have designs and plots, some of them are almost angling for monotheism. Um, they've all got extra little bits and pieces, and they've chosen their own mortals, their own agents, to cause their own problems. And so the main thrust of it is the champions of the Olympians fighting against the actions of the agents of the Titans. It's very much almost a divine proxy war. You're funded at this point, right? Is that right? We are. As of this interview, we've cleared our initial funding goal, and our first stretch goal is passed. Um, we've got um, quite a few days left to go on the Kickstarter, and we're currently homing in on our second stretch goal. The first stretch goal added more of the Olympian gods, so we're up to a full 15 of the Olympian gods. If we can get the uh, second stretch goal, we'll be adding another six uh, titanic gods or titans to the mix. So we'll have even more um, um, complexity in the system because the gods we're adding are actually, they're more the ones who have been in exile. So they add a whole extra um, set of plot hooks and devices for GMs and characters to get involved in. Oh man, that's cool. I like that. So you, you just add that to the main book, just makes the main book bigger. Is that right? Or are there going to be future supplements to come out yeah. later? No, it'll be going directly into the main book. Um, so as we're, as we're going along, um, we will be adding more and more to the setting um, as we get more and more stretch. Later stretch goals look at adding more of the parts, which are part of the core uh, character aspect of the game. We're also going to be looking at adding, adding more world-building information to it and more of the background and the history for trying to get some of the research that my brother and I have uh, done typed up into the book as well. Oh, that's exciting. And then the, for the people who back, is, uh, is there any like beta type thing or, or is anything that you could kind of preview or check out? The great things about 66 is we run more, almost an open beta or an open thing. Everything's uh, under Creative Commons share alike. So once you've bought access to it, you're free to share it and all the other things that come with the, that license. But the great thing, if you go, if you search for Age of Legends, RPG 66 or 66 Hellenic, you should be able to find access to the 66 docu wiki where you'll find the open beta of not just age of legends um but almost all the other of 66 products as well so you can go and check out um all of the for what near the final draft versions of everything that's going to be going into the game including quite a few of the stretch goals as well wow that's that's fantastic i, I love that little try before you buy type thing it's uh it's, it's caused uh, my production assistant monkey uh, rogers there to give up a whole lot of his salary he gets all sucked in, and then boom, he's, he's back at it. I laugh at him because yeah. he never gets to play it. You know, like you never get it to the table. He just kind of builds up on your hard drive. Anyway, yeah, well, that's that's the thing. Problem is, so many amazing kickstarters, and particularly with the the brilliant work you do, Doctor Tom, in making sure that people know about all these kind of things. You 
end of the situation, we'd end up with more games than how you're ever going to play. So, I mean, if uh, your production monkey ever gets uh, a bit lonely with all these games and wants to play, then uh, the 66 team would be more than happy to try and put together a Hellenic game for him. Do oh, you, you hear that, Rogers? No. Oh. Man, he's, he's, he's jumping around over here. He's pretty excited. I, I, thanks, Jay. That's really great. Uh, so now, I, I tell you what, we've talked enough about your game because I have a serious question for you, Jay. Are you ready for a serious oh. question? I am, I'm putting my serious face on. Man, that's, that's a pretty good serious face. All right, Jay. Oh. All right. Okay. Who would win in a mono a, mono a fight? That's, that's one versus another. Mm-hmm. Would it be Zeus or Jupiter? Probably Jupiter. Uh huh. So why? Historically, Jupiter is the one who wins out in the end. Um, Jupiter being the head of the Roman pantheon, um, and in the end, the Roman pantheon does um, well. Rome conquers Greece sometime in around 150 BC or so after the fall of Alexander the Great and these Hellenic substates. So the answer is it's not a what if; it's an actual historical fact. In the end, Jupiter defeats Zeus, Zeus because Jupiter's Romans eventually defeat Zeus's Greeks. Oh, dropping the history on us. It's like science except history. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, well, Jay, I really appreciate you coming on uh, to talk about your game. Thank you very much, Dr. Tom. I hope uh, you enjoy uh, your far and distant land. You just watched the Dr. Tom the Frog Show, and we hope that you liked what you saw, yo. But if it was a big waste of your time, well, it's free, so that's not a crime. But if it was a waste of your time, yes, it's free, so that's not a crime.